Okay, hello everyone. Let's go ahead and take a look at solutions of quadratics with the discriminant being less than zero. Now, the reason why we're going to be taking a look at that particular case is because we're going to be introducing what are called complex numbers. Now, what is that? Let's go ahead and take a look at that first. When we go ahead and take a look at complex numbers, the main thing to look at is the number set itself. We know what the real number set involves. Then we're going to have something that is called the imaginary numbers as well. And the imaginary numbers are going to be based upon the imaginary unit, i, which is going to be equal to the square root of negative 1. So remember that before when we tried to take the square root of a negative number, that was always just not possible because we were only dealing with the real number set. Now when we go ahead and define the, negative, the square root of negative 1 to be i, we can now go ahead and work with those types of number quantities. And together, these make up the complex number set, which is the largest number set that we have and the most comprehensive one. Okay? So let's just go ahead and start again and take a look at our quadratic and notice that we have ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0, where a is not equal to 0. And we said that if we wanted to go ahead and solve for that, we could always go ahead and use the quadratic formula, which is that. And the discriminant is going to be b squared minus 4ac. Now, we had, two, we had three different particular situations which are going to be telling us what type of solutions and how many solutions are going to be coming out based upon the value of the discriminant. And we said that if the discriminant is greater than zero, then x, or this particular quadratic, has two real conjugate solutions. Okay, uh, let's, let's just put uh, the quadratic here. Has two real conjugate solutions. And we said that if delta is going to be equal to zero, then the quadratic has a repeated solution. And we said that if delta is less than zero, we have two complex conjugate solutions. So let's go ahead and take a look a little bit more at this particular situation since we're familiar with these two here. Here's an example. Let's say that we have x squared minus 4x plus 13 is equal to zero. Notice that when we go ahead and use the quadratic formula, we come up with this situation here, which was 4 plus or minus the square root of negative 36 divided by 2. Now before, we would say, okay, stop, there's no solutions. The parabola, when we graph it, doesn't cross the x-axis, and therefore we have no solution. Now we said that we don't have any real solutions, but now, now that we've gone ahead and said that the imaginary unit is going to be defined as the square root of negative 1, I can go ahead and continue with this particular situation here and say that this is exactly the equivalent of 4 plus or minus the square root of 36 times it by the square root of negative 1 because that's our rules for radicals. And then I can go ahead and simplify that to just 6 as normal and this becomes our imaginary unit which is i. So now I can say that x is going to be equal to 2 plus or minus uh, 3i. So notice what I have there now is a complex number. And this complex number is the combination of real and imaginary values. And notice that, again, because the, the, the discriminant was less than zero, we're going to come up with two complex conjugate solutions, which are, of course, conjugates of each other. Now, let's go ahead and take a look a little bit more at the form that we come across when we have the discriminant being less than zero. We're going to come up with a complex number. Okay, and in this particular sense, any complex number, we're going to usually use the letter C, is going to be denoted as A plus B I, where the real part of Z is equal to A and the imaginary part of Z is going to be equal to B. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at that. With regard to the two solutions that we came out here, let's just say that Z sub 1 is going to be 2 plus 3I, and z sub 2 is going to be 2 minus 3i. And notice that those two there are conjugates of each other. So if I was to go ahead and talk about the real part of z sub 1, it's 2. The real part of z sub 2 is also going to be equal to 2. The difference is, is when we talk about the imaginary part of z, which is going to be 3. Now notice it doesn't include the i, because the i is the imaginary unit. We're only talking about the coefficient of the imaginary unit. And the imaginary, the imaginary part of z sub 2 is going to be equal to negative 3. Okay, so what we have now, let's kind of wrap everything up. Because of the fact that we just came up with quadratics that actually had a determinant that was less than 0, 
we need to now go ahead and start talking about what those solutions look like and those solutions are actually complex numbers. All complex numbers have this form here, a plus bi, where the real part of that complex number is a and the imaginary part is b. And when we go ahead and fit that in to where this looks like in terms of the number systems that we are working with, the complex number system is going to be the union of the real and the imaginary numbers. Okay, so we'll take a look a little bit more at how to work with these complex numbers based upon solutions of quadratics with the discriminant being less than zero. And let's see if anybody has any questions the next time that we meet. Okay, see you later. Bye.